Ku Chulain. Ku Chulain, class name Lancer, Ransa, is the Lancer class servant of Bazette Frogamakri Mits in the Fifth Holy Grail War of Fate slash Stay Night. He becomes the servant of Kiriai Koto Mine after Kiriai fatally wounds Bazette and remains under his command for the duration of the war. Karen Hortensia acts as his master during the events of Fate slash Hollow Ataraxia. He is the servant of Rin Tosaka in the Moon Cell Holy Grail War of Fate slash Extra. While he is always featured in the story, he is only fought as an enemy in the Rani route, while another lancer is fought in the Rin route. He is one of the servants of Ritsuka Fujimaru of Grand Order's Conflicts of Fate slash Grand Order. The Child of Light, Hikari no Miko, a hero from the Ulster Cycle of Irish Mythology. He was a demigod, the offspring of a mortal woman, Dykton, the younger sister of King Konkobar Mac Nessa, and the deity, Luff, the god who governed over the sun and a member of the Tuatha Dé Danann, the gods of Irish mythology. Dykton, the daughter of a druid, Konkobar's father, and Mega, the widow of Ross the Red, disappeared in the land of the young without marrying anyone. There, she bore Satanta, Satanta, the child of the sun god. Hound of Cullen. Satanta was born in Ireland and it was still a land named after its abundant greenery, Aaron, meaning, green, in Gaelic. Receiving great divinity from his father, who possessed every skill such as knowledge, techniques, and magic, he exhibited superior talent from birth and boasted supernatural ability that separated him from ordinary people from a young age. The land was split into five countries, and he was sent with his uncle, Fergus Mac Roich, to King Conkobar's army under the northern kingdom of Ulster. He was to have a life that would follow the destiny to one day become a shield of Ulster. He took up the name Ku Chulain after accidentally killing the guard dog protecting the house of Master Blacksmith Kulin. The guard dog was well known to have the strength of ten men. The king was to take Satanta with him after receiving an invitation to Kulin's home, but Satanta was in the middle of a hurling match with his friends. He would have lost the match had he withdrawn at that point, so he said, I'll catch up after I win, so go right ahead. The king was humored the reply, and, allowing him to come late, went to the house first. Tragedy began after one of Kyulin's servants accidentally closed the gate. Arriving late, Satanta was attacked by, Kyulin's savage dog, well known as having the strength of ten men. He alone strangled it to death with his bare hands, and the people inside gathered at the gate after hearing the commotion. Upon learning that Satanta defeated the guard dog, they were full of shock and admiration. There was some sadness in Kulin's eyes at losing his prized guard dog, so Satanta, ashamed of his actions told him, does this dog have children? If he does, could you allow me to take care of them? I will raise them to be guard dogs just as strong as their father. Until then, I will be your guard dog. Kulin, impressed with the boy's offer responded to him with assurance that, I have no need of that. I will be the one to raise the dogs that will protect my manor. You, on the other hand, must train yourself. After all, you will one day be the guard dog of all of Ulster. All of the warriors at the scene nodded in agreement. Consequently, all began to call the boy, Kulin's savage dog, Ku Chulain in Irish Gaelic. The name praises not only his strength for killing the famous savage dog unarmed in his first battle and first time taking a life, but also for his character that thought of the owner of the lost dog even as a child. He was still an apprentice warrior at the time, one in the training group for children wishing to become Knights of the Red Branch. He was around 12 or 13, though he claims it was just the adrenaline rush that allowed him to perform the feat honoring the noble declaration, he took up a geist that says he must never eat dog. It was prophesied that, this child will live as a hero, at a young age, and it could be said that he was predestined to become a hero due to his divine parentage. After his name changed, the group of apprentices gathered around a druid, Cathbad, asking in an uproar which of them would become famed warriors. Cathbad was powerful, with his divinations being strong enough to determine the future, rather than simply see the future. Not knowing how to handle the situation, he decided that he would tell it to only those who would take up arms on that day. The divination was bad enough that none of them attempted to go through the rites of warriorhood, though Ku Chulain was fishing while leaning against a hazel tree due to his disinterest. He went through the rites of warriorhood on that same day, and received the prophecy that said, in exchange for glorious deeds of valor, his life would be short. He readily accepted such a fate, smiling and laughing. Land of Shadows King Konkobar was enraged at him for becoming a warrior at his young age, causing Ku Chulin's temper to also flare up. He smashed the spears of the castle and wrecked a chariot, 
responding with, now try telling me one more time that I'm not strong enough to be a warrior. He was accepted into the Red Branch, but he claims there was not much in the title. He could do as he wished as long as he was not disloyal, allowing him to pick a fight with another land and then have a party the same night and forget all about it. There were many people causing trouble within the nights, so he would keep any eye on his own country more often than others. He was often fighting as a warrior, and he fell in love with a princess, Emmer, the daughter of King Fergal Monarch, at first sight. He was enamored enough that he went to her castle to kidnap her, but she complained about not wanting to be with some nameless child. Only sixteen at the time, he went on a journey in search of fame. He journeyed to the Land of Shadows upon hearing of a powerful sorceress named Skathak who had many warriors searching to be her apprentices. There were many warriors under her, and one, Ferdiad, a warrior of the neighboring country of Connet, was his equal in competing for the demonic spear, Gibal. They passed the vow of brotherhood, and though he has three priceless friends, Ferdiad held a special place in his heart as an older brother. With his incredible magic and unrivaled demonic spearmanship, he acquired the secrets of leaping, Gibalg, and the original runes from her at the age of sixteen. She had said at the time he received the spear, perhaps, I wanted to be killed by your hands, while smiling with a serene voice like a prayer. She had been given a fate where even death was no longer in her hands. She then said, I give up. Better die before that happens, laughing her same hearty laugh of which he had grown so fond. Though he had arrived at the castle by the shortest route, she reflected, saying, if only you were born a little earlier. Young, still young. He could only plan to leave as a lone man lamenting the woman he loved. He stayed there for a long time, feeling at home with his teacher and good rival. Aif, a lord of a neighboring country and in some versions of the legend, Skathaka's sister, started a war with them, and Skathak did not allow him to take the battlefield. After arguing, he was eventually allowed to fight alongside them, and managed to capture Aif after a duel. While they were hated enemies, he realized that he found her appealing, so he pursued her and was beaten by Skathak for it. They eventually parted ways, and he asked that if she bore his child to name him Kanla and send him to Ulster. He was to be given three vows to follow, to not answer his name when asked, to not change course, and, to not back down from a fight, the worst possible rules that could be given to his son. He and Ferdiad left the Land of Shadows on the same day, and he did not see Skathak when they left because she had passed down everything to him and had nothing more to tell him. He and Ferdiad each asked, how about coming to my country, as they left the castle, each laughing at the realization that neither would budge from their position. He returned to Ulster, starting dramatic battles and becoming known throughout Ireland in an instant. With exploits unrepeatable by anyone else, he came for the princess as promised. He was opposed by King Fergal and his troops, but he annihilated them and also achieved victory for Ulster's knights. These battles marked the youth of Ku Chulain, and his subsequent battles bear a heavy shadow. War with Connet The neighboring country of Connet eventually took up arms against Ulster. Queen Med, part of a long line of warmongering ruling queens, was the type of person who hated to give up, so she marched forces after a number of events transpired around her. She invaded irrationally simply to steal Don Quayonge, Ulster's golden bull, simply to beat her husband in a comparison contest. It started with Fergus defecting after the king had killed Fergus' sons out of lusting for young women. The pride of the Red Branch Knights began to serve Connet out of hatred for Ulster's king, and that influenced Meb's aggressiveness. Accepting several Hayas that would make him accept even his own ruin, one of which consisted of, fighting just one warrior a day, he forced the opposing country to take up Hayas unfavorable to them as well. It was said that they could only advance while he dueled one of their soldiers in the fords of the Ulster Gorge. It was either lose 5,000 men in one day, or only slightly advance at the cost of a single man, so Meb reluctantly agreed to it and started his series of duels. It began with Ku Chulin's Rune of Vows, ADHN Gabla, guaranteeing one-on-one -on -one combat with honor at stake. He fords were a land of death, and the conclusion to the war was likely the greatest of living hells in his life. It eventually came down to the strongest of the warriors of Connet, the one man he never wanted to fight, Ferdiad. Their battle was not of Ferdiad's own will, but rather a scheme laid down by Queen Meb. Both had to serve their lords, so one life had to be discarded to defend honor far more worthless than their friendship. They were equal in battle, resulting in the cornered Ku Chula in having to utilize Gibalg to pierce the heart of the man he loved as a brother. Taking Ferdiad's life was the first time the demonic spear had seen battle since leaving the Land of Shadows, 
and it was released on his most precious friend. Holding his fallen brother in his arms, Ferdiad said his final farewell to Ku Chulain, Gibalg is a glory given to only the most gifted of warriors. In that brilliant hall of learning, you were our pride. The battle ended with the defeat of Connet, allowing the recuperated warriors of Ulster to pursue their army and add a great blow to the defeat. He had managed to hold out against them for seven years, and finally succeeded in making them retreat. Final Days Though he captured Medb, he returned her to Connet, not killing her or shaming her, but instead treating her as a queen. Though it was not something he had planned, he never once killed a lord or a woman. He did not like killing women on the battlefield, and loving or hating them made no difference. There were no major battles after that point other than a strange young man coming down to the coast to stir up trouble. He beat any warrior who would speak to him, so the king declared that only Ku Chulain can beat this boy. Queen Meb had perceived her release as the greatest insult, vowing vengeance against him. As Celtic warriors had the custom of making heias, with those warriors who broke them being cursed, she utilized those of Ku Chulain against him. She assembled warriors from the lands with grudges against him, and cornered him with many plots. He was forced to break his heias one by one, resulting in him losing his abilities. Ulster was once again beset by sickness, so he challenged the army of Meb single-handedly. Acting as the shield of Ulster and committing many deeds of valor, he had a life unexpectedly short in comparison to that valor. He fell into scores of traps during the battle, and, battling furiously, he was eventually brutally killed and died pierced by his own magical spear. He would not allow himself to die lying down, and tied himself to up to a post. He saw an otter drinking the blood that had spilled into the river, and he died standing while laughing at its greediness. There landed a crow on the shoulder of his standing corpse in his death, said to have been the incarnation of Morrigan who continued to give him her unrequited love. Poetry and statues praising Ku Chulain still remain to this day in Ireland. Appearance Ku Chulain is a blue-haired, red-eyed man whose primary outfit is a deep ultramarine full-body tights covered in runic protections, grey metallic pauldrons, and a metal plate over his lowest abdominal section. He wears his hair in a rat tail that reaches his mid-back. He also wears a pair of silver earrings. Lancer gives off the impression of a beast, even carrying a bestial smell. Personality Lancer is a fierce, but balanced warrior who enjoys combating a worthy opponent, but at his core he believes in justice and is easy to get along with. He is an agreeable youth acting out the role of one gentle in disposition yet strong in body. He has a playful attitude and takes a very carefree approach to life, but is quick to work himself into a frenzy during a heated battle. He was known as a brave, compassionate, and likable young man in the legends. He mercilessly killed his enemies on the battlefield, but he respected faith and had the nobility to never once break a promise he had made. He enjoys fishing, hunting, and hitting on cute girls. He is a proud warrior, someone who can't abandon a fight just because he's losing. He's ready to fight until the end, for the sake of his fighting will and also for his master. He easily loses his cool, especially to insults calling him a dog. Abilities As a demigod whose father was an almighty god who possessed every skill such as knowledge, techniques and magic, and whose mother was Dykton, the younger sister of King Konkabar, Ku Chulain exhibited superior talent from birth. Boasting supernatural ability that separated him from ordinary people from a young age, in time, the grown Ku Chulain was accepted as a member of the famous Akita Knights. His actions after that rendered him unmatched. Having seen in him a worthy student and disciple, Skathak later taught him all that she knew about martial arts and the more powerful aspects of thaumaturgy. In his training in the Land of Shadows, he was taught incredible magic and unrivaled demonic spearmanship and received the original runes and the terrible magic spear Gibalg. Combat Lancer fights with a two-meter spear, allowing him to only need to attack when an opponent enters his range. Such a distance as three meters between him and the opponent matters little, so while it is easier to thrust at an approaching enemy instead of moving out, he will still quickly close the distance between an opponent instead. All of his thrusts are enough to be called a final blow to strike the opponent down. The main strength of the weapon is in its swings rather than thrusting as its shape would indicate. Its wide swing utilizes its long range to not allow the enemy to dodge by stepping back. Ku Chulain specializes in survival, and is capable of returning alive no matter how hopeless the situation. He usually prefers to fight with his full power as a warrior. 
However, contrary to his legendary battle prowess, his fighting in the Fifth Holy Grail War is extremely limited, thus, this time luck wasn't on his side. Due to the command spell of his master Kiriai Kotomine, fight with everyone, then withdraw, he was commanded to involuntarily perform reconnaissance missions. Archer claims his speed is extraordinary among even the fastest heroes that would normally be chosen as Lancer. He far surpasses all of them, not even three in the world being at his level, and he is the only one with such beast-like agility. In fact, both Medusa and him boast the most outstanding speed in the Fifth Holy Grail War. In average speed, Ryder is faster, being able to move like a bullet and race around the battlefield. Lancer on the other hand, surpasses her in immediate maximum output, as he is able to counter attacks with a lance with the speed of gods, while standing still. If the two of them were to fight each other, Medusa would display greater versatility thanks to having several different types of noble phantasms, however, having protective ability from rune magecraft, he'd be able to counter her mystic eyes. Skills Magic resistance, C rank Ku Chulain holds a magic resistance of rank C, Aria of two verses and below are cancelled. Although this skill is ineffective against greater magecraft and greater rituals, thanks to possessing a rank agility, utilizing large-scale magecraft while confronting a servant with such superior speed is nearly impossible. Personal Skills Battle Continuation, a rank legend tells that the dying Ku Chulain tied himself to a tree before taking his last breath. For he who possesses such a legend, the dying struggle is particularly fierce. When it comes to defense, his excellent agility and great experience make him an impregnable wall, allowing him to be confident in fighting both Archer and Saber at once if the goal is occupying them. He doesn't know when to give up. This is not a method to preserve one's own dominance, but simply the karma that induces the pride of Celt warriors who does not stop fighting until their last breath. It's possible for him to fight even on the verge of death, surviving as long as his injury is not decisively lethal. Disengage, C rank Lancer possesses the ability to withdraw from the battlefield in the midst of combat. It also returns disadvantageous battle to the turn it began, turn 1, and skill conditions to its initial values. Due to simultaneously having this skill along with battle continuation, Ku Chulain displays better his real worth in skirmishes than in one-on-one -on -one duels. However, since he likes duels vso much, this fact does not really stand out. Divinity, B rank this skill defines whether or not a servant possesses divine spirit aptitude. The higher it is, the more one is a mixed race of a physical divine spirit. Demigods are fairly common amongst the legendary souls drawn from human mythology, although few of them are considered more than second-tier heroes by their adherents. Ku Chulain, however, inherited the blood of the Absolute One, the main god of his nation's pantheon of immortal beings. Rune Magecraft, B rank as depicted in his legend, obtained 18 original runes, Norse runes, after studying magecraft under Skathak in the Land of Shadows. The runes are a form of thaumaturgy unique to Northern Europe. The foundation of this craft is the engraving of words of power into stone to induce various mystical events. Having learned an ability that is believed to have been lost to time, Ku naturally boasts skill and knowledge to qualify for the caster class. Although he is a nearly first-rate master, since he himself sees them as a hindrance he doesn't usually employ them in combat. Protection from arrows, B rank Cu Chulain was born with the special ability to deal with projectiles. It's said that it's possible for him to avoid any long-range attack as long as he has made visual confirmation of his opponent. He can deal with most projectiles even in conditions where the opponent cannot be visually seen, as shown in his battle against Hassan of the Cursed Arm, where he cancelled the throwing swords hurled from the darkness. Noble Phantasms Lancer's weapon is the Gi Balg, the Spear of Causation which carries a curse that reverses causality. The wounds inflicted by the spear cannot be healed as the curse of the spear renders them incapable of altering their fate, as long as the spear remains in the world. The weapon has two main techniques which can be classified as separate noble phantasms, the first of which reverses causality to always strike the heart, and the second of which unleashes the full potential of the curse to strike the enemy by hurling the spear with overwhelming power. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.